Ty Campbell with Tekken Racing, and in this video, we're gonna cover power profiles, a new feature introduced in our latest Hotwire software, and how you can use it to create custom ESC to trigger responses to really dial in the power profile of whatever you have a Tekken ESC in. So let's check it out. Power profiles allow us to adjust the ESC output at whatever throttle percentage we're at. So whatever trigger percentage we're at on our radio, we can take that and we can change what the ESC is actually putting out at whatever trigger percentage that is. You can add up to 64 points on this graph anywhere from 1 to 100%. So it gives very granular control over the entire throttle range. Power profiles are going to be beneficial in a drag car, absolutely. You can change pretty much any point you want to on the graph. So this is only going to work if you set a delay in your radio. So you want your radio to launch at whatever percentage works for you, 20, 27, 31, set that. Then in power profiles, make that same launch point your first control point and tune from there. Now you know that from that control point all the way to 100%, it is whatever delay you have set in the radio. Now you can add as many points as you want, up to 64 inside of that, so that you can control exactly what's happening rather than just having it ramp from whatever your control point is set to to 100% in a straight line. This should allow you to tune for loose, slippery surfaces or for tight, tacky surfaces and everything in between. Now for off-road, on-road, oval, and everything in between where we're not just snapping to 100% throttle and letting software do the work for us, power profiles allow us to manipulate our curve from exactly where we want to start. So it kind of works like Expo, but not really. Expo starts at zero, and then it's just whatever percentage curve you set. That's what you're stuck with. The advantages with power profiles is I can start tuning mine at 20% or 25% or 30% and create a custom curve from there. This comes in really handy tuning brushless motors because they're not always extremely linear. Moving these points around changes the trigger to motor relationship. Now what exactly does that mean? It's a little bit easier for me to explain if I have a visual representation that you can follow along with. So let's plug our hot wire into our RX-8 Gen 3 real quick. We'll fire up the software on a PC and we'll check out making custom power profiles. Power profiles are located on the curves tab. This is where we had our pre-builts and our customs. You can see that one through five, these all move. Linear is the default. You can see that these also start at zero. We don't want it to start at zero. Not always, so we can go up to Number six, that is custom. That's gonna open up curves. This is the interface where we can create our custom power profiles. Clear is going to clear any data that is present on this graph. Export is going to allow you to save the profile. Import allows you to import and load new profiles or any custom profiles that you've made. Done is done. It closes this window out and then we can apply the settings to the ESC. Add and remove allow you to add and remove points. You can use these buttons here, or you can just come over here and click on the graph with the left mouse button. So now we set our launch here. If we want to get rid of it, we can right click on it, or we can remove the point that we are currently on. If we just hit add, it's going to add a point, and then between here, and the next point, which will be 100%, it'll add one halfway through automatically, and so on. So it'll just split the gap. So we will remove all of these. Cycling points allows you to cycle points that are on the graph currently. So if we have a few points here, this allows us to move in between them without messing up their position. Once we are on a point, we can move it up and down with these arrows, and we can move it left and right with these arrows. This changes the throttle percentage coming in and the throttle percentage coming out. So let's clear everything. We'll import a custom file that I've created for 8 scale. This is my EB48 base profile right here. And you can see that we've given you a couple example profiles to start with. So 
I know this is kind of daunting at first, but start with one of these and it's at least a baseline and you can start tuning from there. So EB48 base profile. This is the curve that I currently run in my car on the track at Tekin. And this just took a little bit of testing and messing with throttle and really feeling it. So again, you're gonna have to mess with this. But let's check out what this curve is and I'll show you how I made it. So down here, we have our throttle launch percentage. Right now it's at 15%. That means that at 15% radio, we're gonna get 15% throttle. Now I don't need to start anywhere lower than that because it takes a little bit of throttle for these eight scale motors to actually start moving. 15% is roughly about where that starts to happen. So that's where I set my launch point. So we'll cycle to the next point at 20% radio. I'm getting 17% ESC throttle out. So we're just changing the offset of the throttle. At the next point, at 30% radio, I'm 23% ESC output. At 40% radio, I'm 30%. So I'm basically softening this whole middle range of the throttle right here because these eight scale motors are pretty torquey and the power curve isn't exactly linear. So even though it looks linear previously, doing this actually makes it feel more linear. So at 50% radio, we're at 40% output on the ESC. And then back here, I start catching back up because it's pretty good through this section. So at 60, we're back up to 55. At 70, I'm at 70, so those are equal to each other. And then up here, there was a little dead spot in the throttle where not a lot happened. In the data logs, I didn't see a whole lot of RPM gain going from 70% to 80%. So to get rid of that little dead spot, I'm actually increasing throttle. So at 80%, it's actually putting out about 86%. That gave me the RPM increase I was looking at between these two steps to get more of a linear feel up top. And at 90, I'm back at 90. So we're catching back up right here. And then it's just a linear line from 90 on up to 100. So that's kind of a base eight scale curve. I would recommend just loading this profile and go drive it. You know, it's not gonna work for everybody. Not everyone's gonna like this feel, but for me, this really tuned my throttle curve to feel more linear on my finger. That's what I was really searching for. So you can add way more than 10 points. You can do it with less than 10 points. Again, you can add up to 64 total. So once we are done creating our custom profile, we wanna hit export so that I can make sure I save this. This is my EB48 base profile. It's already saved, but if I change it, I'm gonna add a one or a two so that I can have a bunch of different tunes uh, or maybe make a note about you know traction or the tires that I'm using, that sort of stuff. So we'll save that in here. Yes, save it. And now we actually need to save this into the ESC. So we'll hit done. And then over here on this window, just like saving any other setting in the hot wire, we have to apply it. This will actually write it into the ESC and it will save it. Setting save. So just to double check, we'll go back to custom and yep, our curve is still in here. So this is all good. Now we can go out and hit the track and see how this feels. So just like we saw tuning the eight scale throttle curve, I tamed it down from about 20% to 60%. I actually increased how aggressive the throttle was at 70 and 80, and then let it taper from 80 up onto 100. Not to get repetitive, that allowed me to take a lot of the snap out of the mid throttle, add a little bit that was missing in the high throttle, and effectively make the power band in the car much more linear and easier to drive. Not only did this help in the infield and down low, it really helped me with some of those real tricky jumps where you have to get the distance just right and you're in that 70 to 90% throttle range. And it wasn't always consistent before, but I can nail it pretty much every time now. Well, that is some basics on the new Tekken Power Profiles. If you've got a question, please don't hesitate to ask. Drop it in the comment section below. Hit us up on Facebook or drop a line to support at teamtekken.com. Be happy to assist you with any issues or any tuning advice that we can possibly give. Make sure you check out the included tunes in the new Hotwire software. They're a pretty good starting point, even though they might not be perfect for everybody. 
I'm Ty Campbell. Thanks for watching this Tekken Clinic. We'll see you at the racetrack.